Throughout the spring, Michigan residents heard from the governor and health care providers that the state faced a shortage of masks, gloves, gowns, and other personal protection equipment. The COVID-19 Select Committee heard a different story this week when the state's top procurement official said PPE targets had been met. And from PPE distributors who testified they couldn't get anyone from the state to return their calls. William Mathis, the owner of MedSource One, told the committee that he contacted the state time and again to offer millions of PPE. Representative Jack O'Malley asked if the state had ever gotten back in touch. And for any state that was looking for PPE, you had supplied your name, information, you were a, a, a legit supplier, and you never got a note, you never got a call back to say, hey, what do you guys got today? That is correct. I have never received a phone call from the state of Michigan, no representative uh, in any capacity to discuss, request a quote, or purchase, or ask for information. I guess uh, a follow up. Uh, other states then did do that, did follow up? Yes. Later in the hearing, Representative O'Malley pressed the interim director of the Michigan Department of Technology, Management, and Budget, Rom Stiblitz, about the state's efforts to secure personal protection equipment. We hear today uh, from several people, and I know there are others, that couldn't get through or they went to the website and they filled out their credentials but then never heard anything. So I guess uh, my question is, uh, you, you know, your thoughts on that and, and your response to the issues that they had. Yeah, yeah. No, and I, I was actually able to listen in uh, on some of that. So I certainly understand, you know, frustration that you hear on the news, we need it, and then, and then you don't get taken up on your offer. So I, I, I can certainly appreciate that. Um, you know, I'll start out by just repeating what I said during the presentation earlier, and that is, you know, we hit all our targets. You mentioned that you hit your targets, and, and I don't mean this to be a, a disrespectful question, but uh, you say all the hospitals had their PPEs. Again, in my neck of the woods, we, we were, I know our hospitals were worried because, and rightfully so, much of those PPEs were going to the southern part of the state because they were, uh, you know, in, in a tougher situation in some ways. But also, our fire departments were short on PPEs. Uh, you know, other frontline workers didn't have PPEs, and if the state is in a procurement situation where they can get it in bulk, uh, were your targets too low? Yeah. I, I don't know. Representative Julie Kelly followed by asking Director Stiblitz to clarify the scope of the state's personal protection equipment targets. And to how many entities were they planning on um, distributing those? So obviously hospitals, but were they then looking, we talked about uh, local emergency managers putting in a request and hopefully getting that fulfilled. What about nursing homes? What about physicians? Uh, how many entities were you planning for? You know, again, that's that's something that DTMB wasn't responsible for. So I'm not, I, I just don't, I'm not really sure. So if I was a local physician group, was I likely on my own in order to procure PPE or could I contact the state? I don't know whether, like a physician group, I don't know whether that order would have been fulfilled or not. Thank you. I only ask because elective procedures and routine procedures were delayed, and we heard specifically that was due to a shortage of PPE. The committee will listen next week to emergency management officials. We'll be back with more stories from the JSE. If you have a story to share, please visit mycovidstory.com.